guys are all wrapping me. Um, I think when I was uh, approached again by Pamela to ask uh, to talk about the nuances of luxury packaging, um, I kind of struggled a little bit because I think uh, luxury specifically now more than ever is being redefined. Uh, the economy the way it's been, people are really looking at luxury and they're really challenging it. They're asking, why am I paying $300 for this purse? Um, and so it really is looking different to everyone. And so I was thinking of kind of an analogy of how I would start to set up this framework and what I was going to talk about today. And when I was sitting at my desk, I looked at a book. And I don't know if any of you guys have read a really good novel lately. But I feel like inherently all of us in this room and everyone in Luxpack, we're all storytellers. We all have a story that we want to tell. And I think when we're building a brand, oftentimes people think of the logo or they think of just the packaging or maybe just the color. But it's really about the story that you're trying to tell to your consumers. So I found this quote and I thought it really summed up that, that idea really well. And it was the idea that great stories happen to those who can tell them. So really, the idea behind this that I liked so much is that you know when you tell a really good story, you empower other people to tell that story again and again and again. And that's what brings people to your brand. They become brand advocates for what you're trying to sell. Um, the only nuance I would say, and I would add to that quote, is that the difference between luxury and everyday is that what we do in luxury is that we show, we don't tell. I think the packaging and branding are inherently one and of the same. I think that you know to say that someone's a package designer versus a brand, somebody who's been branding, I think that those lines are starting to be questioned and blurred because really at the end of the day, packaging done well, it's it embodies the intellectual, the sensorial, and the emotional brand experience. And I think that that's why it's such a unique touch point for any brand. So what we talked about today, and I actually categorized these from the top and the bottom, is we talked about the different, and I want to just kind of define what I mean by the difference between telling and showing a customer that consumer. So, um, and I think that in luxury, it's really about deciding what are those things that you want to tell your consumer so that you can show them really at the end of the day that you have attention to uh, detail, you have quality, you have confidence. Um, I think we had a, a quote up earlier from Coco Chanel, and I would just like to add another quote that she basically said. And she said that elegance is restraint. And I think that if you can decide what of these that you'd like to tell your consumer to essentially show them that you have you know, confidence and that you have passion about your brand, and that it, it'll exude itself. And so you see why, why you walk around and you see maybe less clutter on the shelf, or you see less, you know, you see restraint in packaging. Um, so I think that a less is more mentality really works in this. Another quote I really love is this idea. Uh, Perfection is not attained when there is no longer anything to add, but when there is no longer anything to take away. I think that's something that we should think about. I think oftentimes in a world that's so cluttered, and I think when you think of consumer brands, and you think of somebody who has six claims, and you have somebody who then comes out the next day with seven claims, that's a, that's a losing battle. So really, at the end of the day, how do you convey emotion, an, an emotional experience for someone? How do you get somebody to feel like when they engage with your product, that they're engaging with something that's a reflection of themselves? Um, this is an example of something that I really loved, because I think that oftentimes we think that words uh, you know, can tell you something about a brand and you have to speak or scream from that mountaintop what your brand and how you're different. Um, this is a good, good example that I found in, um, I don't know if any of you guys know what this is, but this is actually a hair care product. And I think what I loved about what they did here is that they used a, only a couple of those elements I talked about before about telling. They used the form, which I think tells a lot about something. We're, we're all accustomed to seeing this form. We know that it's a cosmetic line. We can associate, we have certain associations with it. And I think that that alone tells a lot. Um, but then you start to think about the patterning. And the patterning starts to emulate even this idea of hair product. And then you look at this iconography, and that actually speaks to the function, right? So it's straightening or moisturizing your hair. And I think the reason why that's so important is the discovery is memorable. How many times do we see this every day? You know, a picture of a woman, you know, on the front of, you know, on the bottle, and you see very straightforward that it's straightening or that it's curling. And I think that it kind of cheapens the product, doesn't it? I mean, we see this all the time. We, we expect it. 
So really seeing something in a different way, you're going to leave, you're going to leave remembering it. You're going to leave remembering how that made it different. So going back to the um, book story that I was talking about before, I think when we sit down to create a new packaging, you really are sitting down to write a novel in, in some way, shape, or form. Usually you start with a theme or a hero, and in this example, I use more uh, cosmetics. I don't know how many of you know this, but more is actually the Hindu word for peacock. So they actually use an analogy, to, and they streamline it through. This is only one of their product lines. But as you can see, all the associations that one has from their own experience with what a peacock stands for. So it's this idea of rare and exotic, about blossoming, and how that can tie to the idea of scent. Um, it's about radiance and magnificence, but also it's a natural occurring beauty. It's not something that's artificial. And I think that you've seen that in the selections in which how they brought that to life in this one product here. But they started with the hero, they started with this, this icon of a peacock. But then you can see how in creating product line extensions, they were able to use that same metaphor and use it in a way from going from a macro um, you know, view of the peacock to something a little bit more micro, like using patterning and tying that, that theme throughout the product line of the wood and the natural beauty, as you can see. And if you do it right, you can even you know, introduce characters like you would in a book. Like an uh, uh, antagonist, as you can see with this horse that isn't a peacock at all, but you've educated your consumers and you've brought them on a journey enough that you can start to introduce new and exciting things. And so where you started with the peacock, which might be a constraint, you can actually work those constraints to your advantage and create something that actually is a memorable experience for the consumer. And we're finding that storytelling is something that's really being used a lot. Here. So, Another example is what we do every day is we take from our experiences what we all know to be true and what we all uh, think about every day. So if I told everyone in the room to close their eyes and think about a matchbox, I'm pretty sure what you see here on the left would probably come to mind. You would think of a box, you would think of it sliding out, you would think of very static, uh, you know, natural wood with the red tips to the, to the uh, matches. Look at how little they did to change this faculty how much more exciting it becomes. Taking natural twigs and introducing something as simple as just movement, orientation, length, and now you have a completely different experience. It's something that even after you leave this room, you might actually remember before what you had in mind about a matchstick, and now all of a sudden it's recreated. Um, this is actually this company, Pogal. I actually was just so my sister is sitting right there recording me. And uh, we were just looking at um, Kind of searching for new opportunities, much like what we talked about about the uh, Matchbox. I think that the e-commerce um, segment really is something that has a lot of white space in it. I think much like the Matchbox, we're used to seeing the same uh, corrugated box showing up at your at your doorstep every day. And I think that although this isn't an e-commerce um, packaging, I thought when I saw it that it really reflected something about book. Uh, about writing a book as well as presenting a package. So I think although we say that we don't want to judge a book by its cover, we all do, right? Whenever we're at the store, we usually gravitate towards the thing that we really love the most. I mean, on average, when I was working at Press with Rocket Gamble, we had about, I think you have about two seconds um, to grab someone's attention when they're walking by. And that's, that's not a lot of time. So regardless of what you would like to think, that does draw people in. And I think with here, even that tape right there, I think I would, anyone would love to just like run their finger across and open up and see what's inside. So we'll take a look. The other thing about writing a book is that once somebody opens your book or once someone engages with it, so the stopping power, someone wants to be reinforced that their decision was the right one, that they picked up the right book. Whether it's the texture, whether it's the color, it's the attention to detail that really allows them to feel confident that the decision that they made to engage with your brand is solidified. Um, and then what we also use in the, in the packaging industry is this idea of anticipation, right? So we, if you have a plot, you have a very solid theme, you can weave in like, you know, different uh, turns and different you know, uh, avenues and reveals. So if, think of this as an e-commerce package. And what you always see are those peanuts, those annoying peanuts that get everywhere in your house. The other day, they just blew all over our, our lawn and my wife was furious. <laughs> um, just even introducing something like a, you know, a layered effect or a, or a paper can really elevate that experience and really make it your own and make something that was very seemingly uh, boring 
and it's something that's for service. And then, as we all know, uh, we reveal the reward. So really, you take someone on a journey, and then at the end of it, you find out what was it that I really wanted to buy, and I got it. But, I, but the process that you took me on, the journey that you took me on to get there, was really unique, and I discovered things on my own about myself and about the brand along the way. But I challenge that that's not the end of the story. And I think that's why Pamela said that this is a chapter um, of the brand story. Because I really love this quote, a brand is a story that is always being told. And I think that once the package is thrown away or discarded, what's that story that you want people to remember about your brand? What's the story that you're telling people? But more importantly, what's the story that you're showing? Thank you.